In this lecture segment, we consider American art in the 1910s and 1920s, with a focus on the armory show and works of art that were in the show, as well as works by artists contributing to American modernism. In the early 20th century, an American realist painter named Robert Henry encouraged his students to paint what they saw, and especially to focus on works of art that depict urban life. He trained in Paris from 1888 to 1891 and brings those lessons to bear on his production at home. Think about his basic mission, depicting the here and now and focusing on people in cities. This is what we saw Manet and the Impressionists doing in the 1860s and 1870s. But in 1900, Henry feels that by training his students to choose these types of topics and to paint in a realist style, they'll be able to create something other than an American version of Impressionism. They'll be able to make something new and American, to create a unique American contribution, instead of what some perceived as American artists borrowing from European art. He painted this depiction of his neighbor's daughter, Eva Green, on Christmas Day in 1907. He shows this little girl with a sense of immediacy, as if she has paused in her movement to pose for him. We see gestural brushstrokes, especially in the forehead and temple. His depiction of her is direct, immediate, and authentic, and shows the influence of Baroque art, especially Dutch and Spanish, and French realism. Just a few years later, American art undergoes a massive shift from realism and impressionistic works to more modern trends. In 1913, some artists related to Henry, called the Association of American Painters and Sculptors, organized the International Exhibition of Modern Art in New York City at an old armory. The exhibition, which you see here, had about 400 works by European artists, including French Romanticism, Courbet, Monet, Van Gogh, Cezanne, Picasso, Matisse, Kirchner, Kandinsky, and about a thousand works by American artists were shown, especially those like Henry, who advocated for this gritty urban realism. Henry painted this nude for the Armory show specifically, to encapsulate how he thought of himself as an artist, to show how he positioned his work in relationship to art production at that time, to show what he was capable of. He chose the female nude as his subject matter, which we have seen so many times, and in choosing something so canonical, he's making quite a statement about what he saw as his modernism, as his unique contribution. He shows us an unidealized female figure, a modern woman, a woman of 1913. But when this work was shown alongside Matisse, whose blue nude was in the Armory show, Henry seemed provincial, passé, and old-fashioned, not the modern triumph he was hoping for. Let's look at Henry's figure in motion in comparison to this work by French artist Marcel Duchamp. His 1912 painting, Nude Descending a Staircase, number two, depicts a figure moving down the stairs, clearly showing the influence of Picasso's cubist visual language, seeing a figure broken up into planes and then put back together so that we as viewers see everything all at once, the form and the movement, like a futurist robot moving through space. We see another stark contrast between the trends in European modernism and where American art stood at that time. Henry's realist, impressionist take on a nude and Duchamp's cubist, futurist approach. Critics at the time hate Duchamp's work. It is compared to an explosion in a shingles factory, and Theodore Roosevelt says that the rug in his bathroom is more successful than the painting. For American artists, the Armory Show is a rude awakening. A friend of Robert Henry's, who was also trying to make American art modern, as they understood that to be, told Henry after the show, quote, We are now old fogies, my dear man, end quote. Modernism and the furthering of its trajectory was a gradual process in Europe, but in the U.S. it was sudden. The show travels to Boston and Chicago, and about a quarter million people see it. The published reviews were terrible. Modern artists whose works were shown were called bomb throwers, lunatics, cousins of anarchists. It was seen by some as an alien incursion, a menace to the public, but it is massively influential. New galleries selling modern art spring up and some artists shift their work to be more modern. Others find their work is suddenly more in demand and interesting to the public. After the Armory Show, American artists consciously shift an almost overnight change to create an American modernism. And American artists have plenty of influences, including Duchamp, who brought Dada to New York when he immigrated in 1915. He has a significant influence on American art, especially as regards the definition of art and art as idea. You see him here in front of a replica of his most well-known work. And here is a self-portrait in which he tore a piece of paper and in doing so produced his silhouette without his really trying, like the Jean Arp collage we looked at. In 1913, he began using mass-produced objects in his art, like these two examples. 
one of a bicycle stool on a bicycle wheel on a stool, and one of a snow shovel. Both of these are found objects, like what we saw with Merritt Oppenheim's fur-covered cup. The artist took an object from the everyday world and transformed it into a work of art. In both the case of the cup and the bicycle wheel, the artist altered the found object, like covering it in fur or hooking it to a stool, but in the case of the snow shovel, he moves it from one context, the hardware store, to the wall of a gallery and transforms it into art with an idea. He calls it art, so it is art. It is a ready-made, ready-made art, no alteration required. His 1917 fountain is a ready-made, a urinal moved from the porcelain manufacturer not to a men's restroom, but to an exhibition. He gave it a new context and transformed it into art. He did not alter it except to change its orientation and to inscribe it with a fake artist's name and date. He did this to push the envelope on the American art establishment, to prompt questions of the definition of art, and to ruffle feathers, succeeded in doing just that. An artist who was working in a modernist vein before the Armory Show is Georgia O'Keeffe. She was from a farm in Wisconsin and studied art in Chicago and New York and worked as an art teacher. You see here one of her charcoal drawings when she was experimenting with abstraction. At around the same time, we saw European artists like Majewicz exploring non-objective works. Some of her drawings made their way to New York City and to Alfred Stieglitz, a photographer and gallery owner, who put together exhibitions of works by European modern artists like Matisse and Cezanne at his gallery 291 that he opened in 1905. He tried to further the development of American modernism through exposure and by giving American artists working in a more modernist vein a place to show their work. He was impressed by O'Keeffe's drawings, like the one you see here, which shows abstracted organic forms of simple shapes and lines. Stieglitz showed her work in 1916, just three years after the Armory Show, and included this drawing. O'Keeffe moved to New York and became part of the burgeoning American modernism, eventually marrying Stieglitz. In this 1926 painting, we see her interest in city life in this close-to-the-ground, worm's-eye view of New York skyscrapers at night. She transforms the skyscrapers, this quintessentially modern type of structure, into planes of color, vertical geometric forms that tower above, framing a low-hanging moon. She boils down the forms of the buildings into simple shapes, contributing to precisionism, which was a movement in the 1920s and early 1930s that had artists creating views of cities and the increasingly modern world in America which often use cubist visual language, these simple planes of color and geometric shapes, to build form. Scholars have talked about the claustrophobic nature of this view and its ominous feeling, and that may be what O'Keeffe intended or felt. Just a few years later, she began spending time in New Mexico, eventually trading the tightly packed and enclosed life of the city for the bright sunshine and wide open spaces of New Mexico. O'Keeffe's approach to abstraction and her contribution to an American brand of modernism continued with her flower paintings, including this example from 1930. She adopts a close view of this type of flower, blowing it up so that we as viewers are forced to notice, the, notice its details. This to her was both abstraction and realism. She said, nothing is less real than realism. It is only through selection, by elimination, by emphasis, that we can get at the real meaning of things. She again boils down her subject into clear form, a simple visual language of basic shapes, few colors, nesting the larger shapes together and creating an undulating rhythm that highlights the natural, organic character of her subject. It's not fully abstracted, but this is still an abstraction, a simplification of form, here transformed from a small flower to a large painted view. Photographer Edward Weston created close, often fragmented views of objects. He contributed to the establishment of photography as a modern, me modern medium used to magnify the trends of American modernism. He primarily worked in California after traveling and training in his home state of Illinois. Like many photographers, he worked as a portraitist for a while, but then he shifted to creating close views of figures or objects. In this example, he depicts a bell pepper, which he placed in a funnel and then boxed in his subject within the frame of the picture, and like O'Keeffe, he denies the viewer any reference to the actual size of the object he shows. This object could be tiny, this object could be huge, we can't tell. He takes an object from the natural world and abstracts it with how he lights it and frames his shot. At the same time, we see the human figure in his work as well. If we compare it to the classical Belvedere torso that we saw Michelangelo and Rubens using, we see the hunched spine of the figure, the rippling muscles and shoulders. Weston created pure, clear, carefully planned views of objects from nature and gave them abstracted form. 
the growth of an American version of modernism that we see in O'Keeffe and Weston and many other artists is a significant development of the 1910s and 1920s, but there are other currents as well, which we'll next turn to.